there anybody in here that has ever found themselves crying out the name of Jesus? By yourself, and the situation was too much to handle. Anybody in here? The way I'm looking at them, Pastor, is a few of them need to be hollering about Jesus. I thought the Bible said I was glad. See, I think we got this thing mixed up. I think a lot of us have come to church and we are looking to be entertained rather than participating in the call unto the Lord. Because when we come into the house, there ought to be enough of your life experiences that testify that God is who God says. So when you walk in the door, and there's no, as my, some of my ancestors would say, no piani. We'll just stomp on the floor and start singing in the house. Because God's been that good in there. Look around to see if everybody else is shouting. See, I've been talked about it many times in my life. I said, Lord, I lost his mind. I said, You're absolutely right. Situation snapped it, but God put it back together. So I got something I want to I am glad that my praise team came with me tonight. So many of you here with us in this time of revival. There is a, a text, it's a familiar text, and I would like for us to look at it to explore and examine what it means to have confidence and assurance in trying and difficult times. I want you to turn with me to the epistle of James. Or this, what we call treatise, this little sermon that he delivers. It's really not an epistle, it's really more of a tract or a sermon. And I want you to look with me in this sermon to hear what this writer has to say about faith uh -huh. in the midst All right. of All trying right. time. All right. All right. All right. Chapter 2 of James, you know the text, 14 down right. to 26. Verses 14 down to verse 26. James, mm -hmm. kind of in the back of the Bible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Look with me, if you will, at chapter 2, verses 14 and following down to verse 26. Um, I am again a reading from the New Revised Standard Version. When you find it, would you just say amen? amen. If you haven't found it, say hold on. Hold on. James. James. Chapter 2. Verses 14. Down to verse 26. Reading from the New Revised Standard Version, we hear these words. What good is it? My brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, mm -hmm. but do not have works, can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, and eat your feet, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works. And I by my works will show you my faith. You believe that God is one. You do well. Even the demons believe Amen. and shudder. Do you want to be shown, you senseless person, that faith apart from works is barren? 
Was not our ancestor Abraham justified by works when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works. Mm -hmm. And faith was brought to completion yes. by the works. Mm -hmm. Thus the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. Likewise was not Rahab the prostitute also justified by works when she welcomed the messengers and set them out by another road. For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is also dead.